Yesterday, OpenAI released a new image generation model called GPT Image 1.5. So after reading the article, I found some features of this new model pretty interesting. It has precise edits that preserve what matters. To simply put it, it keeps the details as they were like lighting, composition and people's appearance. To say it even simpler, it edits the things you want to edit without changing them. So let's look at this editing example. We first give the model three images, two men and a dog, and we tell it to combine the two men and the dog in a 2000s film camera style photo of them looking bored at a kid's birthday party. So it creates the image. Now we tell it to add chaotic kids in the background throwing things and screaming. It adds that, but it doesn't change details. Now we tell it to change the man on the left to a hand-drawn retro anime style, the dog to plushy style, keep the man on the right and background scenery in the same way as they were. And it does just that. Now we give it an input image of OpenAI sweater and we tell it to put them all in OpenAI sweater that looks like this. And it does just that. Pretty interesting so far. Now we tell it to remove the two men, just keep the dog, and put them in an OpenAI live stream that looks like the attached image. And it does just that. So, so far, I think this is pretty interesting, to be honest. Now, apparently this model also has a better instruction following. Let's look at this example. So this is an example prompt, draw a 6x6 six six grid. It tells it to make a 6 column and 6 row grid and it gives some elements to each row to draw. Now, as we can see, the previous models didn't do a really good job, but the new GPT image 1.5 is actually doing a pretty good job. So I think this is really interesting. Another update I really like is text rendering. So it renders denser and smaller text pretty well. So as you can see, we give it this prompt, it has a lot of text and the text is pretty dense and it does actually a really good job at rendering the image. Now after that we give it another prompt to change the article and it does that pretty well. So I think this is really interesting. By now I'm realizing that I use the word pretty interesting so much because this is pretty interesting. Another quality improvement that I found really interesting is when we have a lot of faces. Let's look at this example. So this is a prompt example that we tell it to generate an image of a crowd of tens of thousands of people in front of the Golden Gate Bridge. The faces of everyone in the crowd must be clearly visible. So the old image generation model gave us this. The faces kind of look the same. It's like a robotic image generation. But now let's look at GPT image 1.5 rendering. Now, as you can see, the difference is night and day, and I think it generates a lot of faces much better. But this image generation model, the GPT image 1.5, also have some limitations, like when you want to anime style drawing, or when you have multilingual languages, such as Chinese, Arabic, and Hebrew. But they're still working on this, and I think in the future, these will also be improved. Overall, I think it's a pretty cool new image generation model. And as someone who used to be a graphic designer, and now I'm a software engineer, I'm really glad that every job I enter eventually gets replaced by AI. Thanks for watching.